Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our weekly OCI deep dive. For those of you that might be new to our events, uh, we're hosted on Cloud Customer Connect, which is our Oracle community forum for end users. You'll see links in the chat, I'll share some for you throughout that will lead you back to those CCC forums. And if you are not already a member, we invite you to go join, create a free account, look for discussions, ask questions, and look for some upcoming events on all kinds of topics. My name is Kenna Ketrick. I am a program manager with the OCI Go to Market team. And today I'm joined by Sri Ravinda, principal product manager, and Timothy Mooney, product marketing director, for a deep dive into how to monitor and administrate your databases from the cloud. All right, I think that is quite enough from me. So, Tim, go ahead and take it away. Let's get started. Great. Thank you, Kenna. Um, really appreciate it. And uh, thank you to our audience. Happy New Year to everyone. Hope everybody's safe. And we're excited. Thank you for uh, uh, adding us to Customer Connect. This is our first, as Kenna said, our first in a series. We've got uh, four more, well, four total sessions on the calendar so far, and we are planning to add a bunch more. So stay tuned to that link for our series. Today, we're going to be talking about Oracle Cloud Infrastructure's database management service. It's myself and Sriram. Um, we'll start with an overview, uh, then I'll turn it over to uh, Sriram. He'll talk about some great places to get started, the key use cases for database management service. He's gonna do a deeper dive into the features. He'll run through a demo. As Kenneth said, uh, put your questions in along the way. We do have experts online for that, as well as some time uh, in the end for Q&A. And we'll, we'll, uh, we have folks like Steve Lemmy, who's uh, uh, in a previous life was a database administrator, and we'll talk about um, what his experience is and some of what uh, we see from other customers as well. Next slide. So we recognize many of you are facing some of these exact challenges. Um, we see the proliferation of new stacks out there, some on-prem, some in the cloud, each of these oftentimes requiring different tools to monitor, manage, administer, all the data proliferation from both cloud and on-prem assets make it very difficult. And that leaves you to integrate all this technology together. Um, it's hard, it's time consuming and it's costly. Uh, we recognize that and that's uh, some of the uh, uh, design tenants we've put into. Next slide. Our observability and management platform. So I'm going to use this slide to kind of give you a little orientation of the entire platform. Obviously, the big red arrow is where we're going to be focusing today, the database management service. This platform is designed to support both your on-prem assets and your cloud assets uh, homogeneously. So you're going to see it all from single uh, dashboards, um, however you have it configured. Starting from the bottom, you see Oracle Cloud Infrastructure on the bottom. On top of that, we have a row of foundational services. Some of these are free, some of these are super low cost, and they're really foundational pieces um, with uh, uh, functionality that you can leverage to get started. But the real value comes when you look at the uh, observability and management advanced services across the top. Starting on the left, you have logging analytics. Today, we're gonna to be talking about database management, application performance monitoring. And then we have uh, automation for things like capacity planning, automation for things like getting uh, SQL insights for your uh, database. So, the key functionality here and the beauty of this platform are all of these services are integrated together. So if you're starting out, let's say with logging analytics and you're analyzing the logs of your applications and you find you need a deeper dive into your databases, that's an incremental add. You're not starting over, you're not using a different tool or functionality. It's all built in. So these are all integrated services, which makes it very easy and fast to get rapid insights and uh, leverage automation to resolve problems and those kinds of things. So 
That's the whole platform. Today, we're going to focus on database management. Sriram, let me turn it over to you. All right. Uh, thanks, Tim. Uh, thanks for the wonderful introduction. Uh, welcome, everyone. Let's get started with database management service. Uh, before we get to know about the service, um, let's understand the key value proposition that uh, the service brings into uh, the table. Number one is like you could view databases at one place. That's a theme here. Uh, we can uh, bridge the gap between on-premises and cloud or multi-cloud, wherein you get a full insight into the database availability, performance, and infrastructure operations at one single place. You get information off your databases within minutes of subscription and also allows you to do a managed service offering. You could replace any of your uh, hardware uh, and any such resources that uh, was otherwise used for manageability solutions because this is kind of solution provided in the cloud as a managed solution. The second point is here is to minimize the MTTD, which is the mean time to detect and also the mean time to recover or the MTTR. You could get insights on issues and availability and key statistics within no time and thereby allowing you to detect issues and repair issues, uh, be it from a, a application perspective, which drills down to a particular SQL or maybe a bunch of SQLs that you are uh, interested in, and uh, which again leads to the elimination of uh, finger pointing and also enables you to do fast troubleshooting. Beyond that, you could perform management operations on a single database or at a fleet level. Uh, you could run SQL jobs across databases or within a particular database, and also provide capabilities like table space monitoring, uh, schema management, et cetera, which we'll talk about uh, quickly when we go through these features. With that, let me introduce you to OCI Database Management Service. This is a service that allows you to get a single management view for Oracle databases, whether they are deployed on-premises or in a cloud, which is Oracle Cloud, or any other authorized cloud like AWS or Azure. As I said before, this allows you to minimize your MTTD, which is the mean time to detect, and the MTTR, which is the mean time to repair, uh, which allows you to find a particular problem quickly and move away from monitoring to observability very quickly where I want to actually observe uh, seasonality or maybe observe the root cause of a particular problem and then allow you to perform administration capabilities on top of it. You could leverage your existing on-premises skills uh, based on the knowledge that you have been using the uh, past tools that uh, Oracle has provided. And you can manage your database in the cloud with a unified and integrated uh, way. Now with that, uh, if you were to talk about Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Database Management Service, it is an on-demand subscription-based cloud service, which combines the backend instrumentation and tools that you've been already using within the Oracle database which now provides enriched visualization driven interfaces within Oracle Cloud itself, allows you to have a single pane of glass management view for Oracle databases deployed anywhere. Cloud native in the sense that you don't manage or you don't upgrade or patch the manageability solution. It is fully managed by Oracle. And in that sense, it is truly elastic in nature, which lowers your operations costs. It can connect to an Oracle database 11 to 04 and above, which could be either on-premises or on the cloud. The key use cases we are trying to solve here is to minimize your mean time to detect and mean time to repair, wherein you can monitor your databases and then move on to observability, wherein you can do real-time performance diagnostics and thereby allow you to fix problems using administrative tasks or you know, any other uh, known feature that the service kind of provides. We look at those features quickly. And beyond that, you can manage databases deployed either uh, on-premises or on Oracle Cloud or on authorized clouds like AWS or Azure. Uh, one more time, uh, we'll quickly summarize what we said so far. Um, one single console for monitoring and management, um, be it on-premises or on Oracle Cloud or any other public cloud and Oracle Cloud customer. You could use this for unified diagnostics and tuning capabilities, quickly troubleshoot issues, optimize our SQL and also perform real-time SQL monitoring. We look at these features or tools that allows you to do database diagnostics and tuning from within this service. You have simplified database administration wherein you could schedule jobs on a recurring basis 
or on an ad hoc basis for an immediate need. You can manage database parameters, manage table spaces, schema management, even you can also look at deep diagnostics for an extra data infrastructure as well. So we have divided these key features into three different themes. One is monitoring and managing your databases. This is where you kind of get into the MTTD problem. So you want to get alerted or notified as soon as you see a problem. Let's say I have a load on my database, which is the average active session component or the database component of the CPU is going beyond a particular threshold. I want to get detected uh, quickly. And then I want to move from monitoring to observability wherein I bring in performance diagnostics, wherein I have an integrated view of the database activity, which includes features like Azure Analytics, SQL or session details, blocking sessions. And once you find the problem, then you can actually do a remedial measure. How do I fix this? And there are advisors, SQL tuning advisor is one such advisor, which we have in this uh, capability, which allows you to fix the performance problem that you've identified. You can also use SQL real-time monitoring to do advanced execution plan, plan analysis for monitoring and optimization. From an administration perspective, some of you might want to actually run your uh, uh, jobs, SQL related jobs. You might want to actually run it across multiple databases or maybe even uh, configure your database parameter or table space management, or maybe a fleet wide view of your backup management. Some of these features are still in the roadmap, but then that's the idea. So this is the kind of uh, overall overview in terms of what features we are looking at and what do you get or what do you gain from a feature uh, functionality perspective. Now let's move on to monitoring and management. One of the key asks that we've heard from customers is to have a unified NOC centric view or a network operations centric view of the entire Oracle database fleet, be it either cloud or on-premises. I want to have a single fleet wide view of all my database estate. Database management service allows you to do that wherein it natively integrates with the OCI telemetry using the OCI monitoring service and using the monitoring service as a platform, you can subscribe to events and alarms and get notified. And also making use of those features, we allow you to create a nice dashboard, which is an out of the box provided dashboard, which uh, basically allows you to do the fleet centric management of databases, which are either on premises or on Oracle Cloud or any other authorized clouds. Fleet cell management for SQL job execution. If you have a certain set of databases that are grouped together, maybe tests, dev, or the SIT systems, and you want to roll out certain set of application patches into all these databases at one shot, you have the capability to do SQL execution or a PL SQL execution, either on an ad hoc basis or on a scheduled basis so that you minimize your fleet management capability from uh, an administration or uh, you know, from a rollout perspective. In OCI, we segregate resources within compartments. If you want to have a cross compartment view of your database fleet, we have this capability called as database groups, which allows you to have a cross compartment database fleet. We look at this feature in detail when we have the demo, uh, but for now, for monitoring and management, you have a unified Knox style view of the entire uh, database estate. We support a variety of databases that are available in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, starting with uh, Oracle Autonomous Database. You can monitor the fleet of autonomous databases, wherein the fleet of autonomous databases are available in the summary page itself. Um, so thereby, if you have a fleet of databases, which, which would be either Oracle Autonomous Database or databases on Oracle Exadata Cloud or DBCS, which could be a virtual machine or a bare metal system, or even on-premises, you could uh, manage and monitor them from the fleet uh, centric view. And from the fleet centric view, you can drill down to the individual database of your interest and monitor for average activity or CPU utilization or storage usage for the various set of metrics that you kind of define uh, for the database. And from there, if you're interested in observability, you move on from monitoring from, from observability moni monitoring, from monitoring to observability wherein you can launch features like Performance Hub. And that's exactly what we're going to discuss next. Performance Hub is an integrated system-wide and session-specific uh, tool that allows you to understand more in-depth 
in terms of what's going on from a database load perspective. What can I do more to find the root cause of a particular problem? So you have features like Azure Analytics, SQL details, blocking sessions, which allows you to do a more guided problem resolution. For example, the monitoring service or the fleet page kind of gave me a problem that I have a problem with one of my databases. And it looks like one of the DB CPU component is more spiking up. And I got alerted as well. Now I want to understand more about this. I can go into Performance Hub, use the Ash Analytics tool to understand and filter down on a particular problem that I got notified on, which could be a CPU spike at a particular time. So if this happened maybe 20 minutes ago and I want to come back and see what's happened, what, what was the state of the database 20 minutes ago, I can come back and uh, see what, what happened. Beyond that, you have specific advisors like the ADDM, the Automatic Database Diagnostics Monitor, which constantly monitors these performance data and gives you recommendations in, in the form of, by the way, we found this particular SQL consuming more CPU. Why don't you take remedial measures in terms of maybe looking deep into the SQL itself, analyzing the SQL using real-time SQL monitoring, or maybe even run SQL tuning advisor. You can seamlessly switch between Ash Analytics and various set of other features like the workload tab or the ADDM findings so that you have a correlation that could happen instantaneously. You could support both real-time and historical mode. So as I said before, the use case could be like, right now I got alerted and maybe I want to know what are the problems within the database. Maybe I'm having a lot of blocking sessions right now and I could detect blocking sessions right now or maybe a CPU spike problem, maybe because of the blocking sessions. Or maybe I want to go back in time. I was uh, not uh, paying attention to the alert because it uh, kind of you know was uh, not so important, but then I got alerted again. And I need to now go back in time to see what happened exactly. Uh, if I were to actually analyze this problem and do a root cause analysis, I can do that. And that's where the historical view comes handy. Now, if I find a problem that uh, was uh, detected, uh, the Ash Analytics kind of identified that I have a poorly performing SQL, or maybe the ADDM or the ADAM identified that I need to look into these particular set of SQLs and pay close attention to them. Then I have the real-time SQL monitoring feature, which allows me to do in-depth application performance analysis. Some of these SQLs have uh, been poorly written or poorly designed. Uh, you can actually capture the fine-grained SQL statistics at each step of this execution plan, which allows you to do an interactive visualization, download these reports and share, with these, share them with your application architects or the application DBAs, or maybe the application developer itself. And you can do an interactive visualization as if you're doing a real-time problem uh, resolution. You can analyze the current and historical statements, and that's the beauty of it. So if you were looking at a problem that is kind of constantly recurring, or maybe a problem that is systemic in nature, you can look at uh, a real-time SQL monitoring to solve the problem. Now, this is for uh, any database or any platform that you have. Now, what do I have for Excel data systems? Excel data system behaves slightly different because I use Excel data for massive consolidation. I might have a lot of databases that are consolidated into the single uh, system uh, at times because I have not done my IORM strategy or the DB resource management strategy very well, I might be able to see outliers within the database. And I want to analyze the outliers that would detect or that would actually have a bad impact on the database performance. I can identify any slow disk component that is affecting the system. And the remedial measure would be to plan with a proper IORM strategy. Uh, I could also identify the high load that is impacting the database or the that is impacting the database machine in terms of maybe the load can be classified as a backup or maybe an ASM rebalance operation or maybe it could be at the real user IO itself. So how do I identify the backup reasons or how do I identify the IO reasons? It could be probably due to a backup or maybe the backup got triggered outside of the maintenance window, or maybe some unusual ad hoc report that ran and 
my IORM uh, kind of throttled that particular batch run. So that's how you identify the uh, high load uh, IO that is there in the system by using the IO recents section within the Exadata monitoring. Exadata uses storage cells. You could identify any kind of CPU bound cells and determine the cell offload efficiency. Most likely the cell off offload efficiency is not performing well because of maybe an application or a SQL that is not tuned well. And we have the real-time SQL monitoring that allows you to understand the cell offload efficiency again. Looking at these charts and then going back to SQL monitoring, analyzing a particular SQL, you could pinpoint to a particular section within the SQL where the execution is kind of taking more time and why is it taking more time and what can I do to remediate that measure. And uh, if uh, real-time SQL monitoring is not helping well, then we can also use uh, tools like uh, SQL Tuning Advisor or maybe even drill down further looking at the AWR Explorer. AWR Explorer is a new feature that we introduced in uh, the database management service and is only available in the database management service. At times, we might need to do advanced performance analysis. Um, I looked at ASH analytics, I looked at uh, Excel data monitoring, I looked at uh, real-time SQL monitoring, but I still see you know, there is a gap and I would need to do deeper diagnostics and deeper understanding of the problem. What can I do and what, uh, do, what options do I have? And that's where you have the AWR Explorer, which allows you to visualize the performance trends within the database when you have a bunch of performance statistics captured within the AWR report. If you have AWR reports that is spanning across hours, you generally kind of toggle between them. And now you don't need to do that. At one shot for a period of six hours, you could actually look at the interactive visualization and then do a deep dive analysis in terms of what exactly caused a particular problem. So in the case of Excel data monitoring, you identify a CP bound cell, you identify a SQL, but then I want to actually do more to it and I want to understand a specific metric that is kind of having a problem. Can I do a histogram view of that particular metric? What uh, else can I do to do the root cause analysis? So that's where AWR Explorer would come handy, would be a useful tool for uh, an expert DBA. You can also generate AWR report, the active sessions history report, performance hub, performance hub report, and the SQL health check report from the AWR Explorer. Now for rack enabled system, Exadata of course is uh, deployed on rack. You also have capabilities to understand more about your interconnect and where am I spending more time from an instance perspective? What is my DB time distribution across a database uh, nodes? What is my IO throughput and bandwidth and uh, the related memory components? So I can correlate between this data with respect to the extra data monitoring tab that I already had, and also monitor the interconnect traffic and also monitor rack related cluster events. All this allows me to do monitoring and also some sort of deep dive into the SQL. At some time, we might also have to hire an expert or maybe to get more recommendations out of the SQL that went uh, haywire. So that's where the SQL tuning advisor comes handy. SQL Tuning Advisor operates or uses the same cost-based optimizer, but you give more time budget for comprehensive performance analysis. It gives you recommendations based on the various problems that were identified during the diagnosis phase. ADDM or the Automatic Database Diagnostics Monitor looked at the AWR data and gave you recommendations. And a one of the recommendations would be to run a SQL Tuning Advisor. And based on those recommendations, you run that, and now you see probably it could be due to missing or stale statistics, or maybe you have not configured or used best practices for collecting uh, uh, optimizer statistics. You can also create a SQL profile or maybe go hand in hand with the SQL plan baseline if you already have a SQL plan baseline in uh, your system. Adding any missing access structures like indexes or materialized views, uh, that would be another recommendation. And uh, as I said before, if you have a SQL plan baseline that you had already used, 
It will also recommend to adopt an alternative execution plan. It would say that, by the way, an alternative execution plan was found and you already used a SQL plan baseline before. Why don't you continue using that or maybe consider creating a SQL profile, whichever works uh, for you. So if uh, the system detected an alternative plan that worked very well in the past, it would identify that uh, plan and allows you to actually switch back to that particular plan. So those are the key features that you would do for performance uh, monitoring and then deep dive diagnostics. And then finally, to fix the particular uh, problem that you have identified in the form of a regressed SQL or a suboptimal SQL. Now, moving on to administration capabilities. Schema management is uh, one of the key features that uh, would be used from a security perspective. More often than not, you would rely on a SQL developer tool or maybe your own custom scripts to get a unified view of how uh, many database users do I have, what is their account status, what is their expiration date, uh, when was it created, and also helps us to understand, to do a dr drill down in terms of what privileges do I have for a particular user. So specifically, if you want to actually use this uh, feature, you might need to have certain set of uh, privileges on the underlying views. But then as long as you have that, you would get to know the feature functionality in terms of how many users do I have, what is the status, and also the detailed drill down in terms of how many, uh, what are the system privileges, what are their object privileges, what is the consumer group privileges that I have, if at all there was a consumer group that was already set. So it's a very handy feature from a security uh, uh, perspective, looking at a, a holistic view in terms of the user management. Beyond that, we have a basic administration for database configuration parameters, database groups, which we discussed earlier to group and manage databases by purpose, wherein you can group your databases that are maybe spread across multiple compartments. Um, you want to have a unified view of them. Maybe you have autonomous databases, Exadata and uh, virtual machines, based systems in multiple compartments. You might want to group them together into one single, uh, one single view. Uh, you are an application uh, architect and you are responsible for multiple lines of businesses. Um, I want to ensure that my fleet of databases that I'm managing uh, is kind of well within the SLAs. And I want to have a fleet centric view of my databases that I'm managing. And that's the use case for groups. Managing database storage. Today we have the table space monitoring. You can monitor the table spaces and also the data file components. Table space management from a database uh, perspective, which is like creating, um, updating a table space and then uh, dropping or deleting the table space is in the roadmap. We'll have that soon. From a job, job opt automation perspective, you can apply templates uh, wherein you can bring in your own SQL scripts um, or also perform scheduled jobs on a set of databases or on a single database of your choice if you would like to. So these are the feature functionalities that uh, we are, uh, we, that we have today in uh, the database management service. Now let me talk about uh, the capabilities that we have for cloud databases. For Oracle cloud databases, we have virtual machines, bare metal and exadata cloud service, and also the autonomous database. Now for Virtual machines, bare metal, and Exadata cloud service. There are two types of manageability solutions that the service offers. One is the basic management, and the other one is the full management. Basic management is available to use with the database management service for free. So you don't need to pay anything extra for using this basic management capability. You get Performance Hub. Performance Hub that we discussed earlier and the features within performance sub like Ash Analytics and SQL Monitoring. And these are the two tabs that you would get. You could still do monitoring and observability in the context of a CDB or a container database. It includes 14 key database metrics for the container database. And there are no database management console features like you don't get the fleet view, you don't get the database summary view. And if you're uh, working in the context of an exit data system, you won't get the exit data monitoring. Um, also, the performance of features like ADDM, 
or the blocking sessions, which allows you to do a pointed real-time diagnostics is not possible. But then from basic management perspective, you would be able to do that. If you have deployed rack, you won't get a rack monitoring. All the other features that is not uh, there in the form of Ash Analytics and SQL monitoring would be available here. We have a pluggable database management support uh, that is there in the roadmap. And these features that are not available with basic is available with the capability, which is the full management for virtual machines, bare metal and exadata cloud systems, which is available to use with an additional cost. So you have to have uh, some additional cost that you need to a table for using the full management features. So this uh, differentiates between the functionality for cloud databases, specifically virtual machines, bare metal and exadata cloud service. And I would also like to call out at this point that the performance of feature that is used in the context of autonomous database is free. And there is no concept of basic management for autonomous database. You get the metrics and the performance hub for free similar to what you see for the basic management in the VMBM XSCS. It's not, it's not specifically called out as a basic management service, but if you want to use the database fleet and the database summary, you would need to actually uh, have an additional cost tabled out for uh, getting those features in the database management service for autonomous databases. Now to summarize, um, we also have enterprise manager. Most of you would be having a thought around enterprise manager and compare that with the observability and management cloud uh, solution that we have in the form of database management service. So let's uh, compare and contrast between these two. The overall strategy is to provide a choice to you customers through innovations in both cloud and on-premises. Uh, through uh, manageability offerings. And you have uh, the observability and management cloud services, which are a new set of services that uh, we discussed earlier. Tim in the uh, earlier section covered a bunch of services other than database management. In this context, we are talking about database management, which uh, caters to cloud databases and on-premises databases. We also refer to them as external database management. We've seen that this service allows you to have a uh, hybrid capability in terms of managing databases that are on-premises and also in the cloud, providing a single fleet-wide view. Beyond that, you could also make use of complementary services like Operations Insights and Logging Analytics. Operations Insights is an extension to database management in the sense that database management allows you to perform your day-to-day -day administrative tasks, day-to-day uh, performance management or performance diagnostics tasks. If I want to go beyond that, if I want to do capacity planning on my databases or on my host or on my Excel data system and looking at the performance data that I have gathered, maybe I want to do a seasonality based comparison between last year compared to this year, then operations insights gives you deep insights into those uh, problems that you're asking for or the, the questions that you're asking for in the form of out-of-the-box dashboards or uh, features like SQL uh, insights, which allows you to understand more about the uh, capabilities that are there for a particular SQL that probably had regressed or maybe an inefficient SQL, et cetera. Logging analytics, on the other hand, allows you to ingest all the database logs, the trace files, and then do a lot of troubleshooting. One example is like we looked at the exadata monitoring we have a section for user IO and also for uh, understanding more about the disk throughput and, uh, and also the disk uh, uh, performance statistics. If I want to look at the logs uh, of them, maybe a clusterware log or maybe a rack specific log or a database related log, I could use logging analytics for doing deeper insights into those data, deeper analytics in that area. So overall, you you get a native uh, experience within the Oracle Cloud. And these services are again integrated with Enterprise Manager. If you have an on-prem Enterprise Manager deployed, you could avail operations insights and logging analytics by sending the data that you are already collecting within the Enterprise Manager 
and you could make use of operations insights and logging analytics wherein you can get insights into your performance data be it either on cloud or on premises why enterprise manager you can avail of these complementary features now on the other hand enterprise manager is still there and will continue to be there and we have continuous investment in that area enterprise manager also provides you a capability of hybrid estate management uh you have active management of on premises and also we have uh, cloud aware targets support for autonomous database support for exadata exadata clouded customer all that is made available in enterprise manager as well so it's again inter- integrated with the oracle cloud infrastructure management or the onm features or the observability and management features uh, providing you a choice so that you could actually make informed decisions whether you want to be getting a native solution or you have a continued investment in enterprise manager and you want to leverage that investment and bring value uh, by looking at uh, the complementary solutions or the peripheral uh, uh, you know solutions in the form of operations insights and logging analytics hey shriram you have uh, gotten a lot of great questions can we can we pause for a moment and and maybe have you cover a couple of them absolutely yes Okay, first off is and I'm going to put you on the spot. Um we have a lot of customers look like interested in running the service on the government cloud. Uh, I know the service is, you know, always being developed continuously. Any ideas yet on on when that might be for those people excited to use it on the government cloud? Um that's a great question. We are actively working on the GovSQ um we would have it rolled out by this year maybe mid of this year is what we are looking at but it might come even earlier we are waiting on the uh, certifications uh, we have to go through stringent uh, certifications for getting this rolled out in gov regions that's the glitch so we are actively working on it and we are aware of the requirement and, understood and, and let me just add really quick um sriram's talking about the database management service other services under observability and management are starting to get the gov skews such as logging analytics so just to be aware this is only one service but yeah observability and management itself is going in that direction yeah and that's a great point as well for folks familiar with the government uh typically each and individual service will have to go through such certifications and and there's a extra time to do that so no thank you on that question shriram that'll that'll answer off a few of them um we're getting a, a number of questions related to well how do i start using this you know do do i just go in to the you know cloud console and click on something do i have to res- you know install okay. some kind of agent you know maybe you can you know briefly talk about that or 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 show yeah, that i have a demo coming up uh, i can show that real quick um you know i i understand that there are a lot of questions around that we could actually talk about uh, usage or usability experience when we do the demo Yeah, I think some people are interested on, you know, how easy I can start using this and and great the demo can mm-hmm. can help on that. The other is we've got some folks who have some exadatas. And so for instance, we've got a question related to, you know, the notifications that could be enabled if you've got, you know, an exadata uh being uh, managed here under the service. I'm not sure if you've got that as part of the demo, but we do have some exadata type customers on here as well. Mhm. Yeah, so exadata we support through performance hub today um, we don't have an active exadata for the demo today unfortunately but uh, for monitoring and notification there is this project called as the data plane events which is already available for virtual machines and bare metal exadata uh, also would have this uh, rolled out pretty cu- uh, quickly or pretty soon as uh, so you will get notified whenever your cluster where is uh you know behaving odd or maybe when you have uh, problems with respect to your flash recovery area or the archive is being stuck so be working on that and active notification would be uh, made possible through the console as well as through uh, a command line interface okay well i think that uh, covered off a number of them and uh, great information so far uh, keep the questions coming please um and i'm sure folks will be interested in that demonstration Hey, um, Shriram, one one second before we jump into your demo can uh, can can we run your uh, poll for the uh, enterprise manager versus- Yeah I was about to ask that yes thank you Yeah so um this this question isn't worded exactly the way we wanted it to but essentially what we're asking you here is which 
of uh, for managing your uh, cloud databases, which are you using? Enterprise Manager or uh, the Observability and Management Database Management Service? And we ask that Oracle employees don't vote on these. <laughs> good point, good point. Yeah, so uh, uh, for those in the cloud, are you using the deba database management service or are you using Enterprise Manager to manage your database assets? Sriram, while people are filling out that poll, another question came up. Can you use database management service for your standard edition databases? That's a great question. Yes, you can use database management for standard edition databases. Having said that, we don't support Performance Hub for standard edition databases. We are working on a similar, uh, you know, scaled down version of Performance Hub for standard edition. Stay tuned, it'll be a feature that would be released uh, pretty soon. And another question was around, do you need to purchase licenses like diagnostics or tuning packs to use database management service? For cloud databases, you don't need to purchase any um, diagnostics or tuning pack licenses. It is an additional cost, which is based on a subscription, which is uh, pretty straightforward. It is an OCPU based pricing. You pay four cents an hour for the OCPU. Uh, where the OCPU is the target uh, system which you've configured for using the database, be it a virtual machine, bare metal, or an extra data. Okay, and then if it's an on-premise database? For on-premises databases, you can bring your license, which could be a diagnostics and tuning pack licenses. If you already have that, you get a, a discounted pricing on that if you already have diagnostics and tuning pack licenses. On the other hand, if you don't have diagnostics and tuning pack licenses, you can purchase cloud subscription and then start using database management service using those licenses and avail uh, the features uh, which uh, would allow you to use uh, the capabilities that you would otherwise need to use via the diagnostics and tuning pack. All right, thanks Sriram. Do you wanna um, switch over to your demo? All right, uh, so from the navigation menu, you have uh, Oracle database. If you click on Oracle database, you would be able to see autonomous database, um, bare metal, VM and Excel data. And also you have the external database. This is for your on-premises. Beyond that, if you have um, Excel data at Oracle Cloud or Excel data Cloud at customer, you could uh, navigate to them um, uh, from this uh, you know, navigation link. Now let's uh, move on to one of these databases, which is a bare metal exadata system. So I have a, a database that is already created here, which is a cloud database, which is a rack enabled database. You would be able to see that this is a rack enabled database. This is the node specific information or the database system specific information. Now I have databases, prod CRM. And if I navigate to this database, then I would be able to see that I can enable database management uh, here from here. So in this case, I have not enabled database management for this particular database. So how do I navigate? I go to bare metal VM and Exadata. And from there, I navigate to the database of my interest. And I would look for associated services. And then I can uh, look up for database management and click on enable. Once I click on enable, it takes me through a uh, series of questions. Most of them are pre-populated. You know that you're coming from the bare metal and VM, so we understand that. We capture the database uh, name, the database host. Again, the actual database name. This is the database system name and this is the database name. And also the service name. This is the CDB specific service name. And if you want to use your own service name, which is not the out of the box provided service name that you get when you create the database, you can uh, actually change the service name. Then you have the placeholder for creating the username so that you could actually connect to the database. You bring in your username, which could be a DBS and MP, or maybe a new monitoring user that you have already identified. If you want to use a DBS and MP user, there is one more thing that you need to do. You need to go back to the console or launch SQL developer, unlock that account, and then come back here. And you also need to use the 
uh, database secrets, the OCI secret service to deposit the database passwords. So this is a new OCS service, which allows you to deposit your uh, keys or secrets into that uh, secure vault, we, if we call that as vault. So you can actually use that vault service. And then if you have uh, a created, if you don't have a secret created, it allows you to create a new secret from here itself so that you don't need to actually go to the uh, service specific page. But it assumes that you already have the privileges to use the service. You need to have a certain set of OCI privileges in terms of OCI IM policies to be set up. So you have to work with your administrator so they have so that you have uh, permissions for the vault service and the encryption key in a particular compartment of your choice. And this is where you're going to deposit your user, user password. So you deposit that here, it is asking for a confirmation and then you create your password secret. So it uses the OCI vault service wherein you can encrypt the password within the service. And this is not leaving your tenancy. It actually gets deposited in your tenancy itself in your vault service. What you do is like you allow the database management service to read the metadata of this particular um, header or the, the particular information that you've deposited. Using that, you issue uh, tokens to validate this password and get into the pass get into the database uh, using this uh, you know uh, vault service or using the uh, database that has been deposited in the vault service. So I'm not getting into the details of it but this is how you actually deposit your passwords. Now to connect to the database, you need to use something called as a private endpoint. Private endpoint is something that allows one service to connect to another service. Database management is a service that is uh, now connecting to a service that is residing in your tenancy. So we don't have access to your VCN unless you specifically grant us permissions. So what this does is like you are allowing access to your VCN. If you worked on autonomous databases, autonomous database has private endpoint. So if you have a private endpoint, it allows you to connect to the autonomous database from your VCN because autonomous database is actually deployed in a service specific tenancy. Similarly, database management is also deployed in a service specific tenancy. And we want a secure connection so that the connection does not leave Oracle Cloud and it uses an internal communication so that you could actually talk to the VCN in your tenancy. We could talk to the VCN in your tenancy. This again allows you to create a private endpoint. If you don't have a private endpoint, we have a pointer here. How do you create a private endpoint? Um, if you uh, don't have that, you have to create it from scratch. It is again, something that you need to work with your network administrator or the cloud uh, administrator to get a private endpoint created in your uh, VCN. Now we choose between the two options, either a full management or a basic management. Full management allows you to get extra features, which allows you to make use of database fleet and all these features that you see in the database management uh, service console, or the basic management, which allows you to send metrics and uh, performance hub alone. If I cancel this out, you get into the database management. Uh, related page there where you came from. So you actually are in the context of where you came from. Now, if you've enabled the service, you can actually now go to database management. I can launch database management by looking at the navigation menu, go to observability and management. And then from there, you can go to the fleet summary page. You have an overview page which talks about the service, but I'm really interested in the fleet summary page. I can go to fleet summary page, wherein I have added databases of my interest. I have added databases in a compartment called as database management. You have the capability to view by type, which could be uh, by uh, all the databases that you have. By default, when you choose type, we are looking at application databases. Application database could be a pluggable database or a non-container database or an autonomous database uh, that is a shared infrastructure or a dedicated infrastructure. On the other hand, if you want to look at your infrastructure, which is the CDB alone, you can actually click on, um, look at the CDB component itself. So you have uh, multiple CDBs that you have in, in the system today. I can actually add CDBs here, uh, which allows me to look at uh, CDBs. By the way, for cloud databases today, you can only look at CDBs 
the support for PDBs is in the roadmap. So for cloud databases, this is the view that you would be interested in. Look at CDBs and then from there, uh, go into your database of your interest. You can also look at them by deployment. How many of them are external in nature? How many of them are autonomous in nature? How many of them are cloud databases in nature? So we did not complete the journey of cloud database, uh, adding cloud databases to database management. That's why you don't see the cloud database added here. You can also search by versions. This could be um, 19C uh, or 19. So 19C is for the autonomous version. So, uh, so that's what you would see here. Sriram, we've got about uh, four minutes left. I know we're, I, I love the demo part, um, but I just wanna make sure we leave a couple of minutes for the Q and A. All right, no problem. So this is, you know, overall, I believe, you know, we have a fair understanding about how to enable the services for cloud databases. And then quickly, I will just, uh, you know, uh, touch upon how do you navigate to a single database page from here? Um, if I look at this fleet page, I could see that uh, there are some databases that are heavily loaded, but this database specifically is having a lot of load. So I can navigate to this database by clicking on um, the database name, and that launches the summary page for the database, looking at the performance characteristics for that particular database, which would be CPU, IO, memory, or storage. I can also look at table spaces, users, database parameters, run jobs, or maybe even run SQL tuning advisor. Um, I can actually make use of Performance Hub or AWR Explorer for deep diagnostics because I am seeing that this kind this weight is kind of uh, constant. So I want to know more about what is causing this weight and what can I do to understand more about this particular problem. So I can launch Performance Hub or AWR Explorer. Yeah, I'll stop here, uh, Tim, so that we can uh, take further questions. Great. Yeah, thank you for that demo. I love it. Um, you can really see how interactive it is. And I can also envision, I know you've talked about it before, how um, this is great for both a seasoned experienced DBA as well as maybe bringing somebody up through the ranks um, and, and building out some workflows, uh, enabling them to uh, take advantage of some of that experience that the seasoned DBA has. There, there is another use case as well. This is very helpful for uh, on this service. And that's a lot of the third party tools now that uh, Oracle has progressed its technology in the Oracle database, the, the multi-tenant aspect of the architecture, the, the hybrid uh, and multi-cloud aspect. Um, many of those tools weren't designed nor work for the cloud. And this helps customers bridge that gap. So that is another great use case for having um, access to the service. Uh, Sriram, if you can flip up your last slide with our resources, um, we'll just keep at answering some of these questions. And uh, Steve, if you have any other use cases that you want to mention, or maybe some of the Q&A that we've covered, um, we can do that now as well. Yeah, I, and, and as you mentioned earlier, I, I was a I was a former DBA. <laughs> it's a 12-step program. Once you're a DBA, you're, you're always one. Um, for folks, who are just kind of newer to the cloud, this can be highly complementary to what you're doing with Enterprise Manager today. And this can help you, you know, get your experience in the cloud, helping manage some of those databases that, you know, now may be out there. We, we also have customers who have totally you know, taking everything to the cloud. And, and so in, in those terms, then there's also applicability as well. But there really isn't anything else I'm aware of, Tim, that, you know, if you're, for instance, a DBA, that is going to allow you to be, you know, managing, uh, getting insight and, and monitoring the databases in all these different places. Um, and so, again, the timing for this service is, 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 is great for helping people do that. Yeah, let's, yeah, I wanted to jump to this slide here. Just, you know, we've got some resources. Also, we've got a poll up. Um, I know a lot of you would love to get your hands on this and um, we do have live labs. So um, this is an opportunity for you to uh, take a look at these services um, in a, in a uh, real environment. We've got some stage data in there so you can kind of see how it all works. 
Um, a lot of people are finding a lot of value in the, in the live labs environment. So you've got database management service and many other functionality in there you can try. Um, so yeah, um, live labs is a great thing. Um, we also, uh, Sriram has put together quite a video series for database management. So you can see six, seven, eight minute uh, snippets on how to use some of this functionality. I know some of you had some detailed questions on functionality, you can go there. Um, our blog series, we've got quite a few blogs on database management service, follow us there. Um, the documentation too, I'm just gonna do a shout out there. Um, it's really taken to a new level. There's videos in there. There's all kinds of great resources um, around documentation. So uh, take advantage of that as well. Sriram, anything else you want to add or, or Steve? Well, one of the things I see some folks uh, asking about the live lab. So if you're not familiar, um, the Oracle Database World event kind of just ended uh, end of the calendar year, and we did participate in that. And so if you watch the blog stream, uh, you'll see some articles uh, related to that. So if you weren't able to take care of the take advantage of the live Database World event, um, you still can and have opportunity to do that uh, related to the presentations and lab. Um, Again, we're getting questions, you know, you know, related to things, you know, such as licensing and, you know, what's free and not free. Remember that the database management service is part of the observability and management platform. And overall, there are capabilities of just OCI that are fundamental, things like monitoring, things like uh, notification, things like the service hub, that, you know, diagram that Tim showed up front. So you may not find those direct items in the particular service because the service is integrated with the cloud platform and that's how those are enabled. So also look at the broader OIM capabilities when you're looking at each service as well. Okay, I'm gonna be brave here. I know we're out of time. I'm gonna put my name in the chat uh, email. If anybody has some, Follow-up questions, we'd love to hear from you. Um, one other opportunity I wanna throw out there, um, if you have a good use case that you wanna to talk to us about, we'd be glad to highlight you in some of our events. Um, you know, We can work together with our development team and so on to help in your scenario, but um, it might be an opportunity to highlight uh, what you're doing in uh, some of our public events. So. Um, shoot me an email, timothy.mooney at oracle.com. I'm going to say that's a wrap. Thank awesome. you all very much for joining <laughs> us. Uh, thanks for all your interactions. And um, again, we'll continue with our series. Uh, follow that uh, webinar series to see the latest. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tim. Thank you, Shriram. Thank you, Stephen, for uh, fielding some of those questions and Catherine and Daniela as well for answering questions um, and Dave. Uh, yes, we have more coming up in this series and more in our weekly OCI series. So um, check those out. We'll also be sharing a lot of these links and resources that have been mentioned um, in a post event email and on the forums as well. So you will have access to all of this, uh, these resources and these links as well. So thanks so much for sticking around with us and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great day, everybody.